This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time college All-American at UCLA. A participant in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hey, good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I'm sitting down with Pearly. Pearly, good morning. What's going on? Good morning, Jay. Just looking forward to doing another show with you and uh, got one heck of an interview today. Looking forward to that. Yeah, we got the great Danny Mack, the voice, the television voice of the Cardinals. That's going to be really fun. We formatted the show like around the golf. The uh, first segment's called the On the Range segment. It's brought to you by the Gateway section of the PGA. There's over 300 men and women in our area that are doing all they can to make our golf experiences great. We so appreciate them. We're also giving away each week a dozen TP5 golf balls. To enter, send me an email, j at jdelsingolf.com. Put the word balls in the subject matter somewhere in the line somewhere, and we will put you in the drawing to get a dozen TP5 golf balls. I want to thank Bob and Kathy Donahue from Donahue Painting and Refinishing, 314-805-2132. The inside of your home, the outside of your home, anything to do with your home, guys, call these people. Besides being great human beings, they do terrific work. Bob and Kathy Donahue, 314-805-2132. All right, John, our gateway spotlight this week is Larry Salzman. Larry's a head professional down at Osage National down at the lake, and guess what? He just became a master professional. Now, Pearl, there's almost 30,000 PGA professionals in the United States, and there's 350 master professionals. That's awesome. That, that is quite the accomplishment. Good for him. Yeah, Larry. Larry's a really cool guy. Uh, what an accomplishment. What an achievement. And uh, and then, like you said earlier, we have the voice of the Cardinals, Danny Mack. He's done St. Louis Blues games. He's done NFL games. He's done the Billikens basketball. He's just uh, the consummate professional, always working, giving of his time. Yeah, just terrific. All right, so let's just jump right in to last week's PGA Tour event in the 3M Challenge. Tony Finau starts the day five strokes, four strokes off the lead. Scott Piercy has a, a mid-round meltdown. And Tony Finau is a champion. Love seeing him as a champion, John. Oh, I, I love, I'm a huge, we both are a huge Tony Finau fan. But man, that was a slow, brutal car wreck for Scott Piercy. I, I think anybody watching it felt for him. Having played, certainly not at that level, but I could relate. I mean, he just lost everything that he had. It was just, and he's been playing poorly recently. This is going to be a huge move for him in his career, kind of the tail end of his career, et cetera. And Scott Piercy absolutely could not do anything right. And he was working hard to stay calm, hard to keep his rhythm with his swing. A couple things happened, Jay. Obviously, he lost his game. Then they got put on the clock. That is so unsettling, John. Explain how that is to uh, to a tour pro when that happens, Jay. Yeah. Also, it, it basically tells you that if you don't speed up, there's a possibility of you getting a two shot penalty, which is, oh well, my gosh, I mean something that just can't possibly happen. So you wound up, so you wind up speeding up your routine. Specific things that you and I particularly tried to do slow as often as we could. Well, when he buried well, that ball in the bunker on 14, in that fairway bunker on 14. I thought, oh. He also lost his composure uh, when he got in that bunker. They showed that bunker shot several times, which was simply trying to jam something out of the bunker, I grant you. But he hit that one, that first one, so fat. I think he just lost that kind of internal composure, and it was just painful to watch. And, and Tony Finau has about a five, six, whatever it was, seven-shot swing in a matter of no time whatsoever. And he was doing some good things, but he was getting phenomenal breaks well, Scott Pierce, he was plugging it under the lips of bunkers that he couldn't get out of. All right, John, we're going to tip our cap. And our tip of the cap is brought to you by Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, our buddy, Colin Byrne, 314-966-0303. Guys, here's your car guy right here, Colin Byrne. If you want, I will personally introduce you to Colin. Send me an email, j at jdelsingolf.com, and Colin will get you hooked up in any sort of vehicle you want. Pearlie's got one. I've got one. My daughter Joe's got one. It's uh, it's awesome. I am tipping my cap to the Ascension Charity Classic. I just find out today that Tim O'Neill, 
He is a friend. He is also a member of the Advocate PGA Golf Tour. He's also one hell of a good player. He also just turned 50. He is getting a spot into the Ascension Charity Classic. He's actually getting my spot. Tim is a great guy. He's been a hell of a good player. I think he was up playing in the uh, Advocate event this week in Detroit. And he's the tip of the cap today. And it's brought to you by the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, 314-966-0303. Thank you, Colin. Guys, that's going to wrap up the On the Range segment. Don't go anywhere. Pearlie and I will be back for the front nine and our interview with Danny Mack. This is Golf with Jay Delson. Hi, this is Bob Costas, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. For 35 years, Dirty Business Solutions have been providing exceptional value to their clients, an incredible workplace for their employees, and an unwavering support to the communities in which we live. The Dirty team bring a fresh approach to consulting by rolling up their sleeves and working with their clients. Through collaboration, they deliver results. This is why many of the most well-known companies in the world trust Darty Business Solutions with their mission, their critical projects, and why working at Darty is for the smart, the talented, and the curious. Visit us at Darty.com. That's D-A-U-G-H-T-E-R-Y.com to find out more. Don't miss out on AAA's summer travel sale. From July 22nd through August 6th, AAA is offering up to $2,950 savings per couple in value on select Princess Cruises. You can also save up to $1,300 per booking on premium guided trips with AAA's member choice vacations. There is also limited time special offers on a variety of land and cruise preferred partners. Check out the exclusive member benefits and much, much more. Contact your local AAA branch for more information. Visit AAA.com slash travel sale. Remember AAA for all your vacation needs. Good morning, this is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay, and I'm sitting down this morning with Larry Salzman. He is the head professional and recently crowned master professional with the PGA of America. Larry, good morning, and thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Master professional. So roughly 1% of all PGA members in the world are, are something similar, right? Give us some of the 411 on this. There's basically the numbers they kind of gave me whenever I got into the program. They said there was roughly about 352 in the entire world. There's roughly around 29,000 PGA Class A members. So it's a little more than 1% of, the, of those members that do it. It's an incredible process. It was, it was a lot of fun for me. The process basically makes you kind of look and kind of grow and see what you've accomplished as a golf professional because there are some things that you have to, you have, to have before requirements before you can even enter into the program. And one of them is, for instance, 10 years in the same profession as far as being a head golf professional or director of golf, things of that nature, whatever your classification is going to be. It requires you to kind of reflect on the golf course, your tournament operations, your cart fleet management, uh, merchandising, every aspect of it. You're assigned an advisor. My advisor was named Debbie Foley. She's a Class A member down in Frisco. She's incredible. She drove me to be the best that I could be. If I would turn in something for the, the project and it wasn't up to speed, she would just call me out and be like, you know, Larry, this isn't as good as the rest of the stuff that you put in. You're going to need to redo it. And so it was it was a great process. The first thing she asked me, she's like, why? She's like, why do you even want to do this? And I told her, I was like, because they won't let me be a Navy SEAL. She giggled and she knew what I was talking about. You know, you just, I'm lucky enough that I have a profession that I wake up in the morning and I enjoy. If you enjoy your profession and you're lucky enough to do it, why not try to take it to that ultimate level of mastery? And it was just an incredible experience. I got to go down and see the new Frisco PGA facility that they're building and was there about a week before it actually opened. Kind of got a little sneak preview of of the new buildings and the golf courses and everything and it's and it's spectacular. It's something I'm excited for all of the PGA professionals that are coming up, those associates that are going to the schools that will go down there. They're going to see a level of education that they've never seen before. 
it's neat. It's a, it's a it's an incredible facility. So, Larry, how long was the process? And now you're down at Osage National, and locally here we have access to someone like you. That is really something fortunate for our communities. Process is kind of as long as it takes you, and you have to basically write a thesis project been going on for a couple of years that you're going to extend for a couple of years and that you can show how it's helped grow your facility. My thesis was actually 264 pages. It looks like a Lord of the Rings novel. It's it's <laughs> a little bigger. It's a little bigger than probably my advisor saw. She's like, oh my God, Larry. She's just <laughs> 264 pages. Mine was over dynamic pricing and yield management at tea times. That's something that we've done for a couple of years and it was very easy for me to talk about and to crank out and flowed. So I actually got through the program relatively quickly, probably a little quicker than most, but it was also during the winter time. So I had a little bit more time to do it. You know, what I, I guess I enjoyed about the process the most is that, you know, you find those times to watch a movie and you find those times to, you know, watch Ozark on Netflix, just binge watch it on a Saturday. And that's what I would do instead. I mean, I would actually write on this paper for six hours at a time on some days. It was just exciting. It was great. It was really easy to do. It's not an easy program, but it was easy to easy to do if you're passionate about it, which is probably the key to pretty much anything. If you're passionate about it, it'll come easy to you. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, anyone listening to this could just, the, the passion is dripping from your voice. I feel like you're ready to come out of the uh, microphone and give <laughs> us a dissertation. It's just fantastic. And, and tell us how right. things are going at, at Osage National. I know, um, I hear just great stuff about uh, the golf down at the, in the, at the lake area. You know, it's great. The lake area has really grown. Probably one of the, the few places that can say that COVID really kind of helped us grow as a community. And, and, you know, there was a lot of influx of people that are moving to the lake because of the, the COVID restrictions at the time. So, you know, Osage National is, is, is really, it's just really, really growing and doing well. The, there's a lot of houses being built on the golf course right now. The golf course is in great shape. I'm going to give a shout out to, to my GM, Ryan Mansell, which is probably another story waiting to happen because I'm the one that hired Ryan in the customer service area in like 97, 98 ish, somewhere in that range. And uh, he's the general manager. It's, uh, it's awesome. He's been there for 24 years and he's got a real vision for the golf course and the, and the facility. And it's, it's little things just slowly working towards better every winter, every year, just getting a little better every time. We've taken out a lot of golf trees, taking a lot of trees out on the mountain nine, trying to expand it back out to play kind of the way it was supposed to in 92. I mean, you see that in a lot of golf courses. What they what they wanted in, you know, 20 years ago when the trees all of a sudden started to grow in so much that it's, it's changed the complexity of the holes. And it's just, it's those little things, to be honest with you, little, little improvements here and there and here and there that just keep moving forward. And, and Ryan's awesome at that. So you see it. It reflects at Osage that it gets better and better every year in a little way. Uh, Larry, thanks so much. Congratulations again, and keep doing what you're doing for this great game. I thank you for so much, and thank you for uh, thank you for having me. My pleasure. I am proud to welcome the Gateway section of the PGA back to my show. Whether you're pulling into your favorite driving range, public golf course, or country club, there is an excellent chance that the staff there is part of the over 300 men and women PGA professionals at over 100 facilities that make up our Gateway section. I grew up watching so many of these fine men and women getting to the golf course at dawn, leaving at dusk, spending their entire day running events, giving lessons, and growing this great game. PGA Reach, Drive Chip and Putt, PGA Hope, and the fantastic PGA Junior League are a few of the examples of the programs run by these same PGA professionals. Go to gatewaypga.org to learn more or to find your next PGA professional for your next lesson, go to pga.com. The Gateway PGA, growing the game we love. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. For golf tips, news on the latest equipment, and everything golf. Log on to golfwithjdelsing.com. The front nine is coming up. Powers Insurance is a family-owned agency right here in St. Louis that specializes in providing personalized coverage for the client who has a lot going on. At Powers, they understand that you and your life do not fit in a simple box. So guess what? Neither should your insurance coverage. 
Go to powersinsurance.com or call 314-725-1414 and ask for Tim Davis. That's powersinsurance.com. The Ascension Charity Classic returns September 6th through the 11th. Once again, St. Louis will host golf's greatest champions. Players like Bernard Longer, Ernie Els, Jim Furyk, John Daly, and returning champion David Toms. But no matter which legend wins this year, The real winners will be North County Charities because all proceeds from the tournament stay right here in St. Louis to benefit our communities. Tickets available now at ascensioncharityclassic.com. Folks, do you need a new car, truck, or SUV? Then the Dean Team of Kirkwood is the place for you to go. 314-966-0303 and go see Colin Byrne. He just got me into a new SUV and I love it. Boy, did they make the experience painless and super Super, super easy. Most dealers don't have any cars in their lots, but at Dean Team of Kirkwood, Colin has an entire parking lot full of new and used cars. You don't want a VW? That's no problem. They have Audis, BMWs, Mercedes, anything you want. Colin and the Dean Team of Kirkwood will go get it if they don't have it. Call them at 314-966-0303 or go to DeanTeamVWKirkwood.com. The Dean Team, for all your car buying needs. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The Front Nine is presented by the Ascension Charity Classic, September 5th through the 11th at Norwood Hills Country Club. For tickets, ascensioncharityclassic.com. Hey, this is Jay, Golf with Jay Delsing. My guest this morning is the voice of the Cardinals, the 25-year voice of the Cardinals, and the owner of Scoops with Danny Mac, Dan McLaughlin. Dan, thanks for joining me this morning. i got to tell you, first of all, Jay, it's awesome to be in studio with you on this Sunday morning. Uh, The Larry Salzman interview, master PGA professional. Uh, I have no chance to ever be that guy. I wish I could be that guy. That dude's impressive, man. I love that interview that you just did. Oh, thank you. You know what, Danny? Same. I'm thinking... This guy had to write this thesis and do all of this <laughs> stuff. and spend, I'm like, uh, the day I walked off the UCLA campus, I, I don't know how to hold a pen anymore. You know, there is no way that's happening for me. Well, I tell you what, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I love your show on Sunday mornings. As you know, I, I get a chance to kind of chime in my voice with an Ascension sp- uh, spot here or there, or maybe do some of the, uh, the ins and outs because I love golf so much. So uh, for me to be able to sit down with a guy that's played on tour, a guy that uh, is one of the great teachers in our area. And let's be honest about this, because I know you, you want to turn these questions on me, but let's be honest about this. Truly a legend in golf here in St. Louis. So to be here with you is is pretty cool. Oh, my gosh. We're not talking about that. Anyway, I so you have one of the coolest jobs. You know how much no, I— No, it is the coolest. I follow you. I text you while you're talking. You're probably annoyed as all hell. But there's so many things that I thought— we could talk about today with what you do on a daily basis that people really don't understand. They don't know the travel, the different partners. So I'm just going to ask you some questions. Fire away. Fire, all right, fantastic. Because I know you love, you may love baseball main, maybe more than golf. I do, you? 100%. What is wrong with you? It's a lot. A lot. Of, <laughs> there's a lot wrong with me, but I, I would love to sit in the booth with you. you I would you love to. Oh my gosh. Anyway, what is the best thing about your job? The best thing about my job is that that little baseball has given me my life. And I can't think, I bet you know this off the top of your head, and I'll make you Google it as we we go throughout the day. But uh, I don't know how many stitches that little ball's got in it. I'm trying to think, like 100 and whatever it is. That little ball is giving me my life. Um, I grew up in South St. Louis. I'm a St. Louis native, Jay, as you know, as, as you are as well. And we used to play baseball every single day in the summer rain or shine it was a rainy day we found a way to get under a tree and and golf and do whatever we could uh to play not golf but play catch do whatever now you've called it up and i'm in studio so 108 woven stitches i should know that because there's a company 108 stitches out there that that does great equipment but so my my point is the best part of the job is that it's given me my life so uh, i played it in high school That turned into a scholarship. The scholarship turned into um, having a great experience at Lindenwood University, which is really, in my opinion, the preeminent 
authority on broadcasting. And people can talk about Syracuse, and I get that, and they can talk about these huge universities that are uh, well acclaimed for what we do. However, the hands-on uh, experience that I got at KMOX was second to none because through KMOX, which was through Lindenwood, it opened up so many doors for me. So it allowed me then to do something I love, which is calling baseball games. And and so I look at it that this little ball, 108 stitches of that baseball, has given me my life in so many ways. So that that's the best part of it. Well, there's, there's so many things that come to mind as we sit down and have this conversation. And the, I, I know – these little things that are going to embarrass you, but I know you give away tickets to every single game. You you go and do countless numbers of emceeing for free and then wind up writing checks to these these organizations mm-hmm. because they move you so much. I also know you have a gorgeous family. Don't embarrass were, me on this stuff. This is, here. man, I, I'm telling you, this is sort of the inside part. We want to look behind the veil here. That's the sort of stuff that you do every single day. I've been talking to you on the phone. I've been standing there with you where people are pulling on your jacket and wanting you to sign stuff and asking for tickets, and you always have time for them. Absolutely. That is not easy. Well, I always say when a fan comes up to me and says, um, can I bother you for a second? And I, my standard response is, can you bother me? I said, you pay for my everything in my life. You, you pay for my salary, so you're not bothering me. I'm I'm happy to do whatever, and I I think I saw that <clears throat> firsthand from from Mr. Buck. <clears throat> Excuse me. So when when Jack was coming in to KMOX, and I'd be doing the producing of the show or running the board, the guy behind the scenes, and this is before I was on the air, the cleaning crew that would come in for Sports Open Line, which was normally like around six o'clock, six fifteen, something like that, after the national and local news. Boy, Jay, they just knew when Jack was going to be on, and they found a way to get into the sports office to empty the trash cans or to be around and to be seen. And I'd see Jack go into his his pocket every single time. And I'm not talking about fives or tens. <clears throat> I'm talking about $100 bills being given to everybody. And no one knew that. I, I know everybody in town's got a, a story about that. But the point is, is that I, I just saw the giving side. And I've always felt that this job – in being the voice of a team of the Cardinals that is a civic institution is more than just saying ball two. You have to be involved in the community and being from here, it's a, even more so because you know that maybe what you're doing is providing something for somebody. It's, it's you know, hope, money, um, an experience, whatever. And so that that goes beyond than just saying strike one, strike two, and you're out. Um, and, and I've always felt that that seat, that chair, should be part of the responsibility of, of that job. Well, it's obvious. And I mean, you're part of this lineage in St. Louis. We have been so spoiled. The folks, the voices that have come out of KMOX. Unbelievable. Un- I mean, it's a it's a Hall of Fame. That's right. It's the who's who. It's it's Harry Carey. It's Graziola. It's Dan Deardorff. It's Costas. It's the Bucks. Um, it's the McLaughlin. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not. Oh, yeah. I've just been right place, right time. People always ask me about that. Um I was at the right place, right time. The explosion of cable television. Joe was starting to to go do his national stuff, and Jack was kind of winding down and not traveling. So I, I just happened to be the the right place at the right time, and and those guys took a liking to me, and and here we are, twenty five years. Yeah, later. they only let you do it for they would they had only <laughs> let you do it for a week if you weren't any good. We're not listening to that bloody. What's the hardest part of your job? Being away from my family. Um, it's also the, the the greatest part too in terms of not being away from the family. But when I first started, I was single and uh, had never really traveled like our family didn't do family vacations we didn't have a lot of money and so we'd go to the Ozarks that was maybe our our big thing to my dad would borrow a van from a friend and we'd load up with the groceries and go down and fish for a week and that was our family vacation which was great Um, but the first time I ever saw the ocean I was 18 years old and I was playing college baseball so we went on a spring break trip to go play teams that were in the southern states and So that was the first time I saw that. First time I ever went out of the country was to Canada, and that was because I made what they called an American baseball team in college, and we picked up some kids with Ron Hunt in a van, and Ron was based out of here in St. Louis and picked up some kids out of Jersey and New York and up east and played in Canada. So the point of the story or my answer is that this has allowed me to see so much of the country that I never, ever wouldn't have, have gotten the opportunity to do so and do it on somebody else's dime and enjoy the hell out of it. So when I first started, Jay, I don't know how you were when you were traveling and 
you're just worried about making cuts probably and oh yeah g- still you know, am <laughs> getting getting sleep and that kind of stuff but i uh i used to go see all the sites you know i've seen all i would take the tours and i still do sometimes and go to the nicest restaurants i could find and and do those things to say if it ended tomorrow at least i've experienced great golf courses um Great restaurants, seen things that I never. Liberty Bell. I mean, you you talk about it. I've been I go up the Empire State. I mean, stuff like that, you know. And that's that's really cool to me. Yeah, that's fantastic. Is, is baseball your favorite sport? By far, I, I love it. I I just like I said before, it, it paved the way for so many things in my life, and so um, I'm indebted to the game forever. And I love the sport. The sport has changed more in ten years than it has in a hundred. And even when I first started, it's a different sport. Just the athletes are bigger, stronger, faster. The analytics has changed the sport and how we look at it, how we evaluate talent, um, and how the game is played. So I, I still love it, though. I think all the little nooks and crannies with the sport are terrific. Do you have a favorite city other than St. Louis? Do you have a favorite city? I go to Chicago if I can, even if I'm not doing a baseball game. But being there when I'm there, which is do- usually not in the winter months, it's pretty great. Um having done the blues for so many years and going there in the middle of the, the winter and spending time with our good buddy, Bernie Federko and bouncing around the town with him and having fun with him was always a great time. I, I think some of the best times I ever had with Tim McCarver, were going to, to Joe's and having dinner and sitting down for four hours. And all of a sudden Scotty Bowman comes over or, you know, some of these guys that uh, knew Tim, I mean, I remember being at Joe's down in Miami and Cal Ripken gets up from his table and sits down with us. I mean, that kind of stuff just you know normally doesn't happen, but I'd, I'd have to say that Chicago is probably my favorite. How about a favorite ballpark and why? Wrigley is tough to beat. Fenway is tough to beat. The old Yankee Stadium was tough to beat, and I think Dodger Stadium is tough to beat. And those are all the old ballparks, right? And I love the nostalgia of thinking that, man, Babe Ruth stood at that plate. He hit here. Uh, Ted Williams hit at this place. I get goosebumps thinking about it right now. Um, Albert Pujols hit at this ballpark, and it can date back to Ted Williams. I, I don't know. That that kind of stuff to me is is really cool. With the newer ballparks, I, I'm a big fan of Atlanta's ballpark. I think they've done a, just an awesome job with the battery there and being able to walk around the ballpark. We had an off day there, and I'm doing some of the radio now, but um, had a chance to walk around just the area and see how they have a ode to the past, but yet uh, the modern amenities. I think that's cool. And I'm a huge fan of Bush Stadium. I'm, I know I sound like a homer, but I love what they've done with that ballpark. It plays fair. If anything, it might play tougher for a hitter, but I still love it. I think it's a great place. No, I agree. Gosh, one of the things, Danny, that I got to do when I first got on tours, I went to all the ballparks. What was all your favorite? Them. All of them. Yankee Stadium. Yeah, the 100%. old Yankee Stadium. Old, old Yankee Stadium, yeah. not new. My dad got to play there, you know, and, and all the cool. monuments and all that. Oh did my you gosh. go out to Monument Park? I did. I walked Me through too. the whole thing, and I was like, man, this is so cool. And then I mean, I, rubbing Babe's head on I the know, Monument Park. I know, it's ridiculous. And then I get to, I went to see a bunch of the old uh, barns for the uh, in the NHL. I, I was just going to see that. I went yeah. to Boston Gardens. I went to Maple Leaf Garden. I went to the Montreal Forum. I went, you know, and there's something about, I'm in the same camp. There's something about the old places, the charm, the character, the rickety seats, the oddness of the outfield, the weirdness of the rinks, you know, and you felt like you're right on top of those old rinks. So special. Yeah, the gondolas at the old places are really cool. So you would call a game um, for the play-by-play guy and the analyst. They literally are over the ice which was really cool to see as opposed to what you are now, which is stuck all the way up in the, you know, the, the top rows of the, of these stadiums because they want to maximize all the seating there for, for money. And I get that too. Um, one of my favorite places to go was the old Edmonton arena. And I just, I grew up with the Oilers and Gretzky was one of my favorites. I loved your interview on the show with, with Wayne um, and seeing, thinking like seeing that and, and standing at a statue and standing up and being next to it. I had Bernie take a picture. It's still in my office of me next to Wayne with the cup, um, the statue, and just think about he and Messier and coffee and Grant Fuhr and all these great players that went through there. Pretty cool. That, oh that kind of stuff I love. Okay. So if you hit the lottery today, your four kids, your beautiful kids, all of their colleges paid for. I'm the dad of four kids, too. It's a We're lot. still paying for it, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at me. This is what <laughs> it looks like, man. I'm a little further down the road than you. And, and money was all taken care of, and you know your guys were good. What would you do? Boy, that's a great question. Um, you know, it's funny. We, we all have uh, 
been doing this all summer. All the guys and gals on the crew, we chip in like 20 bucks a week and play the lotto. And we say, if we won, who's going to be here tomorrow? If we knew we had that winning ticket, I still think I would be there. I think you would too. I, That's what I wrote down in my as I was prepping. I go, I bet you he's going to say, I'd still do this. I, I would. I, I I think the pressure would be off. I do feel a lot of pressure in in the job because I, I want to do a really good job for the Cardinals and for the fan base. And some people are going to like you. Some people don't. Um, but I, I think the pressure would be off, which would make it a lot more fun. Um, but still, I, I think I'd still do it because I, I love the game of baseball. You know, Danny, there's something, there's a reverence that you bring to the broadcast booth with you um, that as I travel around, you get a chance, you can easily pull up all sorts of different, yeah. you, there's something that you bring to the table, probably because of St. Louis, probably because of your background and the way, you know, the Bucks and the whole thing, that, that, that's an intangible, that makes listening to you so different to me. Have you heard that from people? I got to believe you. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I think sometimes, especially on the television uh, side, there's a lot of cookie cutterness to it, if you will. Um, I try not to be that guy. I try to do it with a ode to the past and, um, and try to always keep my energy up. Uh, in television, you got to have energy. You got to sell it. It's almost, you know, people come in and watch us do an open and they're like, man, you're screaming. I'm like, not when you're watching it. So when it goes across the television, it looks like a guy that's excited to be there. Um, I think in radio, you can paint the picture and have a little bit more of, of what you want to inject and what you see as opposed to, oh, by the way, that plays over, so you better go to this graphic that uh, we sold to you know, Joe's Auto Shack, and it's got you know five guys on it. you got to talk about the graphic. So um, I do try to be different. I, I think the thing that we have to remember is that in this day and age, and I, I do believe this, and I've been doing it, longer than most in the game on, on in the television side on baseball is that there are people that are the fans of the Tim McCarvers of the 60s and the 50s and the 70s and then you have the group that's the 80s and the 90s and then you have this the, the ones that are in the 2000s and then you have the the ones that are the newest fans that love analytics so I try to sprinkle in all that stuff with an understanding though that this is a cardinal game and I'm going to be cardinal centric and I try to do that. I, 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 you know, shoot, I'm gushing, but I'm a huge fan. Can you sit tight? Yes. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more of Golf with Jay Delson. How would you like access to 90 holes of golf? Well, that's what happens when you join at Whitmore Country Club. You get access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Links of Dardeen, and the Golf Club of Wentzville. And guess what? No cart fees included in that deal. There's no food and beverage minimums. There's no assessments. They have a 24-hour fitness center, two large pool complexes, three tennis courts. Year-round social calendar includes holiday parties, picnics, date nights, live music. They even have a kids club for your children and much, much more. There's junior golf, junior tennis, and swim teams available. This is a family-friendly atmosphere, and they have a wonderful staff. If you get out there, you got to poke your head in the golf shop and say hello to my friend Bummer. He is a terrific guy, and he will help you with your game and show you around. And don't forget, there are golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments, and couples events available all year round. Visit WhitmoreGolf.com. That's WhitmoreGolf.com. The Ascension Charity Classic returns September 6th through the 11th. Once again, St. Louis will host golf's greatest champions. But no matter who wins, the real winners will be local area charities and communities. Tickets available now at AscensionCharityClassic.com. Hello, friends. This is Jim Nance, and you are listening to Golf with my friend, Jay Delson. Folks, are you in the market for some additional protection for your ride? You need to call my friends at Vehicle Assurance. Their number is 866-341-9255. Sherry Fain is the owner and president, and she and her team are committed to helping you with your unexpected auto repair bills. They are committed to finding the right protection for you, your budget, and your family. They only work with the top vehicle service providers in the country. Get the protection and the peace of mind you deserve. That's Vehicle Assurance, 866-341-9255 for a free quote. 866-341-9255. After my knee replacement, I was able to swing the golf club again without any pain. SSM Health Physical Therapy guided me through the rehab process, and when I was ready, 
one of their specially trained KVEST certified physical therapists put me on the 3D motion capture system. It was awesome. They evaluated my posture, alignment, and the efficiencies of my swing. They gave me golf-specific exercises to help make my swing more efficient and repeatable. Call 800-518-1626. Tell them Jay sent you for special pricing. Your therapy, our passion. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. To learn more about the game of golf, latest equipment, and golfing tips, log on to jdelsinggolf.com. The Back Nine is presented by Pro-Am Golf. Hey, welcome back. This is Jay and Golf with Jay Delsing, and we are headed to the Back Nine, brought to you by Pro-Am Golf. I'm sitting down with Danny. Danny, thanks for hanging in there with me. I got another question I got to ask. You can ask me anything you want. Baseball, golf, whatever. How many, this isn't the question, but it's part of, it's a, kind of a, a prelude to it. How many interviews do you think you've done? I wrote down the, the number 10,000. I mean, okay, I'm an exaggerator by nature, but I don't know if it's, that's in an exaggerator. it's in the thousands, right? It is in the thousands for yeah. sure. Um, even on, I, I, like I started the Scoops with Danny Mac website and we went back and looked at that and there's thousands uh, plus interviews on that alone, and that's from two and a half, three years ago. So I, I can't even imagine how many I've done. It's well into the thousands for sure. Okay, do you have a favorite? Um, Does one stick out? I mean, I've seen you do Bob Gibson, Lou Brock. I was going to say uh, Gibson, yeah. We we do these uh, evenings with the Cardinals, and it's a program that I started with the Cardinals, and I'm very proud of them. And I went to the Cardinals, and I said, you know, we, we have this unbelievable – history and, and these guys are still with us we ought to make a night that is amazing for these uh not only for the players but for our fan base and if we break even on it that's cool but we've experienced uh something that you're never going to see again in your life and so this is probably six seven years ago and the first one was over an all-star break with bob gibson and so you would come to the event it's a 90 minute q a uh, open bar, dinner, go down to the track. You know, the, 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 I think the 67 trophy was there to take a picture, and everybody walked away with like a Gibby baseball. It was a pretty cool deal. Pretty nice. So those were probably my favorites. I actually recorded them. I have not put them out um, for, for public consumption because I say this is a unique night in which you've paid to be here for this experience. You're going to get something you've never heard or seen before in your life. And so the first one that we did sold out in 24 hours. We asked Bob, hey, would you do another night? And he said, yeah, I'll do it. So we sold that one out. Um, those are my favorites because those guys are so open knowing that what they say is going to stay in-house. And uh, I actually will go back and listen to some of those for posterity's sakes and to listen to maybe something that they said about a game or an individual that I forgot, and I'll reference it on the broadcast. And so those are probably my favorites. And we've done Bob Gibson, Lou Brock. We had uh, Willie McGee. We had Keith Hernandez. We had, I think, Carlton. We had Whitey. We had the 06 team. We had, I mean, Tony La Russa came in. I'm, I'm missing some. We have one coming up, if, if I may, but one with David Freeze coming up. Um, you can just go to cardinals.com slash speaker series, and everybody walks away with uh, a David Freeze signed photo, I believe, from that night, 90-minute Q&A with him, the dinner, the, uh, the World Series uh, Museum, or the museum for the Cardinals is going to put on a World Series exhibition, and you'll, you'll find and hear stuff on those nights that you've never heard before. And the cool thing about it, Jay, is that we had states represented, like I think it was something like 40 states in the two nights with Gibby, represented a people flying in, understanding that that was their mom or their dad's favorite player and saying, let's come together, let's go to this, because, you know, this is a unique experience. So those are the interviews that I think are my favorite. You know, one of the things that I know you do before every <laughs> single game is so much homework. Uh, the little bit that I got to dip my toe in the water of broadcasting, man, it is so much more, there is so much more to it than people realize. Oh, yeah. It is certainly not easy. Who would be your toughest interview? Do you have one that ever stuck out in your mind? Because, look, Bob Gibson was one. I don't know if there's ever been a more comp – Tiger Woods is the most competitive Compelling. guy in our sport. Yeah. Bob Gibson was different. If you had a great relationship with him, and I did, he would text back and forth with me during the games all the time. Um, he was wonderful to me because I think he felt comfortable with me. 
he knew I, it wasn't going to be a gotcha moment kind of thing. Yeah, you weren't going to take a shot at no. it. No, and I've, I think people know that if they come in the booth with me or if we're doing a sit-down or something, um, that that's going to be treated with kid gloves. The The one interview that really got me going and put me on the map was when Mike Keenan was fired. Um, I used to produce his Friday night show, and when Mike Keenan would come into KMOX, he was a different human being. He was not the guy that you saw behind the bench or practice or – doing his, uh, his media scrums. and that, He was a wonderful – I mean, he was awesome. And so when he got fired, no one had heard from him. Everybody wanted to hear from him, and I called him. I had like three different numbers for him. I had <clears> – <throat> and at the time, I don't think there was cell phones. So he had a cottage. I think he had a place in Arizona and then like a normal residence. And I called him up. He answered, and I said, do you mind if I do an interview with you? And he said, no. Sounds great, Dan. Call me back in five minutes. Called him back. He was great in the interview. The Post-Dispatch took it, ran with it, went everywhere. And so sometimes you get these guys that you don't realize or think will be really good, and they say stuff that will just blow you away. And I've had that before for sure. Well, yeah, and that interview, I've seen that interview. That interview, it's – Yeah, it went everywhere. I mean, he because he talked about everything. He talked about the Keel Center partners. He talked about his relationship with Hall. He talked about why he got fired. You know, his Gretzky. thoughts, yeah, all that stuff. So to get that and to have him speak as openly and honest as he did, that was pretty cool. Yeah, that is awesome. Danny, what is the oddest thing you've ever seen uh, in a baseball game? And one of the things that comes to mind is the double play that happened last year. When I heard you call the double play, I thought you were making – because I, 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 caught, I caught part of the game – like right when it was happening, and yeah. they're like Harrison Bader is on second, and Ozzy, I mean, and uh, Yachty's at third, and you recounted the that it was like a six five seven three. Two. I'm like, come on, this is so. This. I was gonna say that's probably the craziest play I've seen, but there's more to it too. We called it from a studio because we weren't traveling at that time. And so the oddest thing I've ever seen was the cardboard cutouts in an empty ballpark. And when you got to the – so I'll tell you, Jay, there's two things that come to mind during that COVID year. One was they had summer camp, and they were going to do an exhibition game between – like it just – it was going to be the, you know, Cardinals against the Redbirds. You know, home jerseys and away jerseys. We're going to split up the teams so that guys can get some work. Cardinals said, hey, would you come down and call this? We'll put it online. And we had like close to 100,000 people go to Cardinals.com and watch. Because you have to remember at that time, there was no baseball. There was really no sports. I think maybe we had the match or something like that and a race car uh, yep. exhibition or something like that. There was nothing out there. And uh, I went down there. They gave me a mic and said, go for it. And that was <laughs> it. I mean, there was no, no partner, no uh, help. The, the people that were running cameras were people that had never run cameras before. Their pipe, they were testing out. The, the crowd noise, like, how should we do this with a great play? Like, it was a run-through for them in the, the scoreboard room down at the ballpark, you know, if there was a great play, how do we, you know, how do we do that? Oh, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And um, so that was weird. And then the most bizarre thing I saw was uh, I was going up the elevator during that year. It stopped where I wasn't supposed to stop. I got off at, like, one level below where our booth is, and um, I walk out, and imagine being and looking at the main concourse of Bush Stadium and there's batting cages everywhere because they had to spread out all the players. So that's where they were taking BP. There might be a group of four over here, socially distanced. Over here there was that. There was this and that. And it was all dusty and people hadn't been there. It was just bizarre. And so in sports, that is the oddest thing I've ever, ever seen. And I hope we never see it again. Oh, my gosh, I do too. I, I, just in the golf realm, I mean, the players came out and said this – Totally sucks. Oh, I yeah. mean, there's no energy. There is no life. You pull off some sort of – JT, I think, said, I just pulled off this amazing putt that I couldn't believe. And by the time I walked to the next tee, no one was there. There was no energy following me, and it was like I had to pump myself up. And I, I think that's why even in golf and probably in all other sports, but even with baseball, we saw that certain guys – and to me, Javi Baez was a great example. He feeds off the crowd. He's a showman. He's a great player. And when he makes a great play, he's going to feed off the energy of the crowd, recognizing a great play. And when you didn't have that, I do think it, it adversely affected not only our experience as fans, but even for the performance of the players. Absolutely. Okay, Danny, how hard is – this is something that I have done some research on, and I can't find anybody else 
in MLB that has to do what you do. How hard is it to change partners on a weekly basis or a, or a road trip basis? I mean, Brad Thompson and Jimmy Edmonds, they both played the game, both great guys and everything, but they both bring an entirely different vibe and energy to the party, and it's it's it, it shows. Yeah, you prepare differently for each guy, for sure. And, you know, at one point, I think I had McCarver, I had Al, I had Ricky, I had Jimmy, and I had Brad, and maybe somebody else. Ricky like, and Kiel, maybe? Maybe, was, yeah, yeah. He yeah. did some games last yeah. year, but it was like five or six, and you do the game differently. You try to... At least for me, I would try to because I've ESPN taught me a great thing, and I, I worked at ESPN for a long time, which fans may not even know or care about. But one of the things that they would always say is, "You are there to call the game and bring up your partner, like put them on a put it on a tee for them." And I just thought they all have different skill sets that are better. One might be better at this, and this guy's better at that, and it's incumbent on me to bring that out of them. So I would try to prepare differently for each guy. And 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 you do. You can tell. But, you know, the, everybody has different chemistry. That's nothing you can – you can't change that. That is just the way, we, you know, certain people's personalities react a certain way. And that also is part of this deal. For sure. And I think I get along with all of them great. You know, I hope they would say the same thing. Um, they're all different, though. And so part of that chemistry on the air is trying to, to make them feel comfortable – I mean, the game's the game, so you're always going to call the game, and that's what people want. They want to hear about the players on the field. But uh, if I can draw those experiences out of them or their expertise, that's the number one goal. Okay, cool. This is my, my favorite question. I've been dying to ask you this personally. I can't wait to hear the answer. So I've We had, haven't talked about this already? I've had – no, I'm wearing you out. No, no, I just – I, I, I figured have, our, our conversations on and off the air that you would have asked me this. I'm dying for this one. So I've had people ask me, take me through a typical week, like you get in on the – you know, uh, from the PGA Tour, and I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever, and I do this. But I want to know, for a typical week for you guys, you're at Bush, and you're closing up a homestand, and you're heading out. Um, and because of COVID and because of the shortened season, you guys are jamming games. You're not getting any time off. 20 days in a row of baseball, 20 days in a row of golf, 20 days in a row of being a postman. or any, That is not easy to keep your focus. Please take us through. The game just ends. And let's say they, they let you guys out early and it's a four, 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 four o'clock the game ends. Okay. Take us through that. You got to wrap up your TV and now. Then, are we traveling or are we? Yeah, we're traveling. Okay. You're, so, so what does well, all the best look way like? to do it would be a lot of times are night games. So, um, like right before the break, we had uh, we were in Philly, then went to Atlanta. So we traveled to Philly on an off day, got to Philly, did that series. We had Sunday night baseball. So then we left after the game. You always leave after the games. So there's not like waiting until the next morning to fly out. You leave that night. And so we got into Atlanta probably at four in the morning. So take us through what. So you got to wrap up your uh-huh. your stuff's already packed. Oh and yeah, then that's go, already been. You go down into the bowels of the stadium and you wait for the players yep. and everybody to get everything together. That's an hour, hour and a half. You know, you're sitting around on the bus. You know, talking about the game, um, maybe listening to some music, watching something you downloaded, whatever. And then you take the bus, you go to the airport, you get on there, they go through security, you load up, then you fly to the next city, get off, get on the bus, get to the hotel. Uh, that particular time, it was 4 a.m., we got in. That night, we played on the 4th of July. We had a two-hour and 37-minute rain delay. We got back to the hotel at 2.30, played the next four nights, then got in at 3 in the morning from Atlanta to St. Louis. and Teed it up again. Teed it up again. I mean, that is an incredible. I know you. You're working all the time. Yeah. you got so many balls in the air and doing your thing. But are you able to sleep at all on those planes? And what's I, it, what's I don't it like? sleep. I, I mean, I can sleep on a plane. I usually don't. Um, every once in a while, catnap a little bit here or there. But I'm usually watching some. I'm so wired, Jay, after a game. And my adrenaline is going. And it's hard to come down from those. And so it takes a while to fall asleep. And... I usually just watch something I downloaded and try to get sleep when I can. What do the Cardinals mean to you? Everything. I mean, outside of my family, they mean everything. Um, They're an extended family. And they've been really good to me. I, I've been um, so lucky to work for the DeWitt family, and Mr. DeWitt is amazing, and his kids have been amazing. His wife has been amazing to me, and I'm not just saying that. Um, I mean, I have friends that are counterparts in other cities, and they don't have what we have here in St. Louis, which is where – 
an owner actually cares about you as an individual, but also cares about putting out a good product, which means investing in the product, and in in conjunction with that, also uh, caring about the city, which means the fans and all the things that you see going up around the, the ballpark with Ballpark Village. They've been incredible stewards of the Cardinal franchise. It's not lost on Mr. DeWitt of how historical the franchise is, and they're great stewards of the city. So they, they've been just amazing people. They really have. And I've seen some of the stuff that I, I don't want to say on the air, but just behind the scenes how they take care of people. It's just amazing. Yeah, and Mrs. DeWitt, is, awesome. uh, is uh, she's the Barbara Nicholas Pillar Yes, that is just a rock over on that side. 100%. Yeah. A- and the son, Bill DeWitt the yep. Third, yep. our president, yep. great. They're just great, great people. It's interesting, Dan, when my dad got traded from the Yankees in 1951 and got traded to the Browns, the De- uh, Mr. DeWitt, original Mr. DeWitt, yeah. was the general manager. Oh, yeah. And Art Richmond told my dad, I'm sending you to St. Louis. I know it's the worst team in the league. You're going to love this family. They're going to take care of you. And they did. And that was in 1951. They, and they did. And they, and they did. haven't lost that one bit. No, that's fantastic. So m- moving moving forward, let me just let me wrap this up. How what would be is there anything that could be a cherry on the top of a career? You've already had. First of all, I got to tell you, folks, if you haven't gone to Scoops with Danny Mac, you've got to check it out. Most people have, I I even have a website. Most people have a website. This is a media company. This is a, a selection of sports that are collected and written about and videoed on. And it has got something, I'm not kidding. For everybody. It's got yeah. something for everybody, doesn't it? It does. So you have this going on. You've got your four children. They're competitive athletes or your wife, the, the whole thing. How, what would be the, the wish list for Danny Mac on... Not that your career is ending anytime soon, yeah. but what is is there something that you haven't accomplished? I mean, you've got so many aces in your I want to call hand. Well, I want to call postseason baseball, and I'm going to get that opportunity hopefully this year. I've been invited by John Rooney and Mike Claiborne and and Rick Horton to join them uh, on the radio side. Which you got to remember when the season ends, regular season ends, TV, local TV's out. So they've invited me to come over and and do a few innings with them. That that would be amazing to me to be able to call some World Series or playoffs or NLCS, whatever. Um, so that's on the professional side. And on the personal side, I just hope my kids uh, reach and, and enjoy their lives, you know, and try to provide for them a life that uh, they look back and go, man, that was that's pretty cool. I got to, you know, play golf because they love golf, as you know, Jay, and, and be well-educated and, and enjoy themselves and be good citizens. And if I can have them be good citizens and good people, then... I feel that maybe we did okay. You know what happens, Danny? Because I'm I'm further down the road than you are. The, my kids are starting to have their own children, and they'll, they'll call me and go, "Dad, how did you do? Exactly. Yes, this and I'm right. like, I have no idea. Exactly. We, I just did it. You yeah, know, I just right. worked hard and just did it. That's right. And what you do is what you do for them. Yep. Is the way I look at it. So I just I want them to be good people, happy people, and and give back to as much of the community as they can. Right on. Oh, man, thank you so much for this time. I so appreciate it. I got to finally ask you that question that I've been dying to hear for so long. You're the best, buddy. Thanks for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure. This is Golf with Jay Delson. I want to tell you about my friends and longtime supporters of this show, Marcone. Yes, they are incredible community stewards. Yes, they are the largest distributors of GE appliance parts in North America. What you don't know, they are spearheading, led by owner and St. Louis and Jim Sowers, a new service dog program with and in conjunction with David Faraday and the 24-7 Battle Buddy program. Jim and Marcone are ensuring that a minimum of two service dogs a year will get partnered with a veteran hero in need. These dogs are expertly trained, connected with their veteran master, and then magic starts to happen. These dogs are retrained to meet the specific needs of their warrior and to help them successfully navigate everyday life. You can learn more on Facebook at Troops First 24-7 Battle Buddies or reach out to me at j jay at jdelsingolf.com and I will fill you in on more of this program. I want to tell you about a family-owned and operated golf business that's been right here in St. Louis for over 40 years. I'm talking about Pro-Am Golf Center. That's right, Pro-Am Golf Center. I know you know the name, 
but I'm not sure you know what they really have to offer. They have everything a seasoned golfer like myself could need, all the way down to what a beginner would want. Pro-Am Golf Center has the lowest price in the area for custom club fitting. I just went and visited CJ. He is terrific. If you call them now, mention my name, Jay Delson, you will receive a discount on that already low club fitting price. Their number is 314-647-8054. Ask for CJ, or you can visit them at ProAmGolfUSA.com. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. I've been looking for over three years for the perfect place to be the official 19th hole of the Golf with Jay Delsing show, and this search is over. Please welcome the Loading Dock to the show. What a great place it is. It is located at the confluence of the Mississippi and Illinois rivers in beautiful Grafton, Illinois. Their patio is killer with seating for over 800. And every weekend, the Loading Dock has the area's best live music. There's no reservations required. They have overnight lodging available. And they also have an ice skating rink in the winter months. And don't forget about the super cool Riverside Flea Market which happens the fourth weekend of each month from April through October. If you're into antiques and collectibles, you got to check it out. The Grafton Ferry runs directly from St. Charles County to within steps of our parking lot. Go check out the loading dock and say hello to my buddy, Peter Allen. He is a great guy, good golfer, and a lover of the game. Call 618-556-7951 or visit them on the web at graftonloadingdock.com. For more information on their live music schedule, the Riverside Flea Market, and more. The Loading Dock, the new official 19th hole of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. Hey, welcome back. Golf with Jay Delsing here. Jay and John are with you. We are headed to the 19th hole, and it's brought to you by the Loading Dock in Grafton, Illinois. Great spot. Just went up there, visited my buddy Peter Allen. Got to check it out. All right, Pearl. So when you think about the grind that we know of, on the PGA Tour, you know of when your your um, your years as a pro, your years of being with me, and then you start, you know, laying down some of the stuff that the Major League Baseball players go through. It's very very similar, but one difference I think needs to be pointed out, Pearl. Those guys never stayed at the Red Roof Inn and Racket Club like you and I did all those times. They're all staying at Westons. And the other thing, Pearl, that really gets me about the, the team sports, those guys go up for, a, say they get a 10-day road trip, they get handed a pocket full of money for incidentals, like over $100 a day. Yeah, where is my, yeah, you owe me back pay now that you bring that up. I've been meaning to bring that up for about 20 years. Wait a minute, I was thinking you owed me back pay or front pay. I, I, well, somebody else did, had to give it to you so you could give it to me. That's where the problem was. <laughs> you know, I, I just I, I I just don't understand what it would feel like to sign a contract for three million, four million, five million, thirty million dollars a year, and then get on an airplane and not have to buy yourself lunch. Yeah, you know, and then you're also not your own guy. They're telling you when you can play, you can't play, how to play, how to dress, how to do this, how to do that. You think you I'd know, like that, Pearl? Yeah, you would be god awful at that. That's why you didn't <laughs> even try to do that, and and I would be as well. The freedom that you get is in the tour. Hey, make your putts, shoot low numbers, and you get to play anywhere you want in the world for a whole lot of money, and you don't care about that $100 a day per diem stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Pearl, that's going to wrap up another show. Hey, Austin Ippert. Austin, you hang out by your mailbox, my brother. You are getting a brand new box. This isn't going to John Perlis. It's going to Austin Ippert, and you're getting a brand new TP5 golf ball Heading your way, buddy. Stand next to that mailbox, Pearly. Don't take any of his balls. You're going to get some next year. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, re- I'm going to renegotiate something I just negotiated with. Going four or five dozen of those puppies, too. I'm glad you brought that up. We haven't signed yet, so I'm taking those. I can't hear you. <laughs> Folks, that's going to wrap up another show. We appreciate you listening. Stay tuned for more golf with Jay Delsing. Hit them straight, St. Louis. We're creating a better future one swing at a time. The Ascension Charity Classic returns September 6th through the 11th and provides critical dollars for area charities. Once again, St. Louis will host golf's greatest champions. Tickets at ascensioncharityclassic.com. Hi, this is Peter Jacobson, and you're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing.
Hey, this is Jay Delsing for SSM Health Physical Therapy. Our golf program has the same screening techniques and technology as the pros on the PGA Tour use. SSM Health Physical Therapy has the Titleist Performance Institute trained physical therapists that can perform the TPI screening on you as well as use the KVEST 3D motion capture system. Proper posture, alignment, etc. can help you keep your game right down the middle. We have 80 locations in the St. Louis area. Call 800-518-1626 or visit them on the web at SSMPhysicalTherapy.com. Your therapy, our passion. GEICO asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, GEICO can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance, and more, and GEICO is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to GEICO.com or contact your local agent today.